Hey guys, my name is Olivia and I'm a fashion and portrait photographer here in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, I wanted to talk to you all about why I love my favorite three lighting modifiers. I've been doing photography for a while now and I'm finding out that I always go back to these very three light modifiers. They're always somehow or some way in my sets. I might change my lighting techniques. I might change the positioning, but a lot of times they're somehow in there. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. <laughs> So let's go straight to the point, no BS, let's get into it. Oh, but before we go any further, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what's your favorite lighting modifier or after watching this video, let me know which three are you interested in using, et cetera, et cetera. So my three light modifiers, they range from soft to hard light. My work is mainly in that good middle ground. Sometimes I go very hard, sometimes I go very soft in my light, but more so my work is, I have a good balance of contrast and soft light. So it's very important to me to kind of just play along with the shadows or no shadows, etc. So all my modifiers can be used in a way where you're using it, it on its own, or you can use certain other tools attached to it. So one of the things that I use is a grid. I like to make sure that I have a grid for all my modifiers, at least all, most of them, especially my top three that I'm gonna list today. I like to have a grid because a grid allows me to tighten up the light and focus it on whatever I need to focus it on. So if I need to just focus on the face, if I need to focus on a hair light, if I need to focus on the material of the shirt, if I need to focus on the shoe, whatever, a grid will kind of just almost turn the light from going like this to going like this. It kind of focus the light essentially. And each grid has a certain degree point. So you can get a 20 degree grid and that's really tight. You can get four degree grid is not as tight as a 20, etc. cetera. Um, so definitely look for grids when you're buying your light modifiers because it would just kind of help you have control in your studio. And for me, I work in a small studio space, so it's very important for me to have that control because if I don't, a lot of times the light will spill everywhere. And if that's not the effect that I'm looking for, it just won't work. And another attachment that I like to use on my favorite modifiers, um, honestly, all my modifiers, but definitely my three that I'm gonna list today, is a diffuser. So with a diffuser, it basically, it just softens the light so if it's a hard light, it softens it. If it's a soft light, it softens it even more. So I love that it just kind of allows that control. So let's cut to the chase. So my very first modifier that I absolutely love, it was actually the first one that came into my collection, is a large, I believe 65 inch, white umbrella with the fusion or without, depends on the image I'm going for. The beautiful thing about this umbrella is that it has a white fabric inside, so it naturally is going to be more flattering on my subject because it's not super sharp and harsh and reflective, like let's say a silver umbrella. So it just really creates nice, nice even lighting. And this is really good to use for group pictures, um, like I said, to make really soft light, to kind of mimic like a window light. If I want to create any Rembrandt lighting, I just love this because it just really makes things even. And nine out of 10, when I pull this umbrella out, most of my clients will love their shots because I know that it will always create that, like I said, nice, even lighting. I like to use it to bounce light off of a V flat so the light can bounce back into the, into the set and kind of have that bounce off light and not the direct light. So there's so many, amazing ways that a large umbrella will be so great in your collection. And like I said, it's gonna be really good with group shots, but it's also going to be good for full body shots because it's so large, the spread of light is gonna go from head to toe and the environment around it. And so if you take the diffuser off, it's going to still be soft because it's a white fabric inside. However, it's gonna get even softer with the diffusion sheet. Honestly, I think if you're thinking about buying anything on this list today, 
I definitely say start with this umbrella, with this modifier, because it will just allow you to learn how to control light. It will teach you how to um, kind of get creative with it because eventually you're going to get bored of just putting it directly in front of the client or the subject. Then you're going to learn how to turn it, put it to the right, put it to the left, put it high, put it low, under light, over light, like have fun. And if you have the space for it, do so. So my second favorite light modifier is the 37 inch Octobox Silver Umbrella. Is it umbrella? Silver Octobox, so 37 inch Silver Octobox. I love this because it's not as big as the first one. It kind of helps once again, more control with the light because it's not splashing everywhere and it's not as big. So it kind of keeps the light more focused and the light is a little bit stronger just because there's not a lot of space surface area to spread light around. So if you really want more of a punch with the light, this is definitely a good um, option. Also, I love that it has the silver uh, fabric inside because silver helps with reflection. It helps with just the sparkles, the speckles. It really just brings, makes everything more pristine and more sharp. And I love that with my work, that's important to me in my work is to kind of have sharp, clean lines. So this kind of helps everything glow a little bit more. And if I want to centralize the light, make sure that it's not spreading on the background. Yes, I can move my subject further away from the backdrop so the light doesn't spill onto the backdrop, but I can also use a grid. Like I said earlier in the video, a grid will allow for control. And in a small space or in any space, control is so helpful to make sure that your image is what you thought of and not what the light wants to do. I have used this light mainly at a 45 degree angle because I like the shadows that it casts from my subject onto the backdrop. That's just particularly for the work that I have done. But of course, like I said, there's so many ways to make sure shadows don't fall off. You could put it directly. It's just so versatile. If I want a headshot light, I can make it, I can use it as a portrait. I can use a full body. Of course, the light doesn't spill down as even as I say, the first modifier, the large umbrella that I mentioned earlier, but it will definitely draw some light down there, but not as much as the first umbrella. A lot of times I use this modifier for more uh, medium shots. And a lot of times if I am using this modifier, I'm topping it also with my first modifier. So like I said, the beauty of these three modifiers that I like to use them together, separate, etc. This is my baby and almost all the time it's in my shoot somehow, whether it's doing some overhead lighting, whether it's directly in front of the client, giving the fill or giving the main light, headlight, it can do it all for me personally. So my third favorite modifier is a classic, but a beauty. It's the standard reflector that usually comes with most lighting kits. I absolutely love this because it has the silver interior, so it kind of helps with the speckling. And if I want hard light, I want it to glow personally for my work. So I love that I could just pop this on and create nice, hard, defined shadows. Not as hard as like a snoot because a snoot is super concentrated and and makes and it's not a lot of space to work with. It's a, it's a lot of control. But if you want more of that spotlight effect, then that's definitely great. But I love this one because it creates nice, beautiful, hard light. It shows all the texture. So if texture is important to me, or if I want something that's to be really reflective, I grab this immediately. If I want a very dramatic shot, I grab this immediately. So I will use my first large umbrella modifier for nice, even flattering lighting. And I will use something like this one, the standard reflector for very dramatic shadow and light contrast, the whole nine. You know, if I wanted to do, let's say, for example, an old Hollywood vibe, or I wanted, to, if I wanted to do anything with hard lighting, I usually have this somehow, some way, some form on my set. I also love it because I can use it for hair lights. So it really just kind of creates that nice reflection on the hair light. And I don't have to use much power on my lights to get the effect that I need because the light is more concentrated as opposed to a large umbrella or the Octobox that I mentioned as number two. I also love it to kind of light my backdrop. So if I really want more gradient lighting in my background, or I like I separate my subject from the backdrop and I want some fun lights in the back, 
I will put this behind my subject and it will separate them really well and give a nice, fun um, lighting in the back. I will even pop gels on it. I will pop grids on it just to play around with it because it just creates that nice concentrated light that will help me have control. I love a grid on it. I highly recommend you get a grid for your standard reflector. It usually doesn't come with your lighting kit, but definitely go out and get a grid because it would just change everything. A lot of times I use it for my portrait shots and a lot of people don't usually grab this for portrait shots. I just know that post-processing, I might have to do a little bit more work with the editing, but I honestly don't mind at all because I love the effect that it gives. It just makes the skin glow very well and it just kind of helps create the dramatic effect that I need for the work that I do. So, all right guys, thank you so much for watching my video. These are my three favorite lighting modifiers and honestly, they're not going anywhere. If anything, I'm just going to get different variations of it <laughs> because I love what it does for my work, especially in fashion, um, photography and portrait work. So definitely don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below and let me know, does any of these three resonate with you to put in your collection or which one do you feel like you would start with if you're a new photographer let me know down below i would love to hear all the insight tell me what kind of photography do you do i want to know it all <laughs> and don't forget guys keep practicing keep shooting and i'll see you on the next set bye guys